So forgetting flying into orbit on these different vehicles. Yeah. Potentially, we could just, just get the elevator. Yeah, just 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 press that button. Wait for it to. Bing. There's a little space, guy in please. there. <laughs> Orbit, please. So a space elevator is a concept that's been around for a long time, yeah. actually. Was it Was it even... Was it talked about in the 19th century or something bizarre I think like so. That? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think um, so. Pe- yeah. Which is crazy. To Before they about. even really had the concept of rockets, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a very old concept anyway, yeah. relatively. Um, and it's very difficult, unfortunately, on Earth. because of, Well, it's a ridiculous structure for a start. You, yeah. It basically involves like tethering a giant counterweight to a huge cable that runs between like the surface of the earth and this counterweight that's then pulled yeah. taut because of the the tension of the counterweight yes and then you run objects up and down like cars or, or <laughs> carry whatever you want to call them carriages or lifts or something up and down yeah. climbers, climbers are often I think called, called yeah. up and down this cable <coughs> um, which can take days because this thing's going to have the cable's going to have to be like tens of thousands of kilometres long right yeah yeah, because the it's physics got, of it doesn't work got, properly. Yeah, and you've got to get to somewhere. I th- it's got to be way above the counter. It's got to be way above the point in which you want to stop at. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. yeah, it has to be extremely long. It's got to be above geosynchronous yeah. orbit. Um, which is pretty high to to keep the tension basically. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, th- 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 there'd be a point of the cable at which, like, you're at geosynchronous orbit, and if you let go of the cable there, you would just stay next to it yes. in orbit around it. Because you're moving, so imagine you're just moving, or like basically the cable's moving at the same speed as the Earth rotation. Yes. So like underneath that point, you're yeah, in you like a, either a highly elliptical orbit or or just a suborbital speed, and you just fall right. back to Earth. Above that point, you you'd be flung out because you're on like the centripetal force, and you're being like. Yeah. Flung so you, out. you could use it then to launch yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could launch. You, you could depending on where you let go of the cable, you can put yourself in like Mars trans Mars injections and stuff like oh, that just just by letting go of the cable. And that you're just using the Earth's rotation as your um, acceleration. Yeah, like a slingshot. Yeah, which is awesome. Um, yeah, that is very cool. But the problem is, of course, the materials involved. Yeah, well, it's rid- I mean, it's a ridiculous. Th- object. Thing, th- right. So, so that that forgetting the counterweight, just just for a cable to support itself that length, mm-hmm. the weight of that cable is like it's obscene. Obviously, it's that long. The yeah. weight of the, it can't support itself basically in any of the materials we have currently for the one you need you would require. Do you mean support itself like under its own weight, like yeah. on, the, on the Earth? Like it's it's own or just ha- hanging itself basically yeah. at that length. Yeah. I think it said that um it would it would just snap just from the weight of the the actual cable itself because mm. uh, I think because the, 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 the most tension would be on that point at the geosynchronous orbit yeah. where so it'd have like, to be thickest there. Or yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's being pulled in each direction. Yeah. equally basically the yeah. gravity of Earth like pulling it that yeah, way so if you weren't, didn't want to run stuff up and down it I think if you just put the cable out in a certain part of the orbit so, so it was pulling on itself but you wouldn't be able to run climbers up but I think it would snap oh shit of it, it, just from the weight of the cable for getting yeah. the counterweight um, with every material we have at the moment uh, and obviously you need a counterweight and stuff to, to climb stuff up I think that's how it works yeah. um, if it's wrong you'd use know. an asteroid as a counterweight though yeah people talked about that yeah. and yeah. you could also use the asteroid as the raw material to build the cable so you could park an asteroid in, in orbit around the Earth right. and then build the cable down to the Earth from the asteroid. That's nuts. Yeah. So gradually, imagine that. It would be gradually like coming through the atmosphere. You'd be able to suddenly be able just to see dangling. it. And just be like a thing just dangling out of the sky. <laughs> It'd look absolutely crazy. And yeah. it wouldn't be touching the ground. It'd be whipping It'd be all over hanging. the place, though, wouldn't it? I don't think so. Not necessarily. From the winds and stuff. Yeah, well, there'd be. Yeah, I guess it would have to be somehow weatherproofed. Um, well, and once it's like tied down, it'll be fine. But yeah, I don't that's know. Point. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, yeah, but you'd have that problem either way, though. You have you to build catch it up it or build it down. Yeah, yeah. You'd always have that problem. Maybe the weight of it is just. I mean, it would be moving a bit with the with the wind, but I mean, it's the other end's tied to a giant asteroid. <laughs> so <laughs> um, it's a crazy thought, isn't it? So, so there are some ideas, right, of what types of other material we could use to build the cable, like carbon nanotubes and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think is a Kevlar the strongest like type of um kind of like line we can make like kevlar is cables, it possibly. possibly like cheaply manufactured because carbon nanotubes obviously can be manufactured but yes it's not very uh, may, may, ke- anyway kevlar is like a, a ready available material that we yeah. could potentially use to build something that long um but it's not strong enough it would snap although yeah if you built a space elevator on mars you would kevlar would do the job Re- would it shit 
and I think on the moon as well. Obviously, would, that would make sense. That's um, crazy. Is that just because of the, the gravity is like because it's much less, less gravity? It's got to go less distance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, um, Kevlar would be strong enough. Thing I'm pretty the, sure I've read that. Thing is with the moon though is that the moon's rotation is real slow, and so that means that geosynchronous orbit above the moon is really far away. Right. So you need a super long cable, apparently. That makes sense. Sure. So it's it's sort it's sort so of maybe. maybe not viable for the moon, but it's different with Mars. Like so, that the the speed of rotation of the body that you're building it off of is like mm. an important factor. Yes. Um, I think how the, long the cable will end up being. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing about um, carbon nanotubes, not only are they super strong, yeah, but you can also conduct electricity through them, can't you? Yeah. Which yeah. is useful. <laughs> Which is basically like almost essential for yeah. things trying to climb up. The yeah, because that's one of the big problems, apart from materials, is like how do you power the things that are going up and down? Yeah, like without them having to carry a shitload of fuel, because otherwise, like, why would you? I mean, you might as well just use rockets. If you have sure. to, if you, you know, if you've got a rocket-powered climber, yeah, that's like, why don't you just <laughs> right. build a rocket? <laughs> yeah, so you want to be able to power them through the cable. Yes. So if you can conduct electricity through the cable, you don't have to then carry extra weight in the cable for cables, yeah. <laughs> power cables. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. That's good. So carbon nanotubes could be a good way of doing it. And they're super good at conducting stuff as well. If you build, like, it's almost like a graphene, like, carbon nanotubes are basically like rolled up graphene, aren't they? Some of them, like, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think they are, like, then lots of different layers yeah. of that. Um, but they're really good conductors. Yeah. So, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So yeah. you wouldn't lose a huge amount of, uh, as, well, you would lose energy, but you wouldn't lose as much as you might think. And so this is another way, if uh, you grab a, a meteorite, like a really carbon heavy meteorite, uh, asteroid, sorry. Right. And build your cable using the asteroid as the yeah. raw material. So you just like gradually extrude yeah. this thing from the asteroid. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> Could you build one from, uh, like, so the, the other. Could you do it between, like, two bodies? Apparently, you could do it between two tidally locked bodies. So, like, Pluto, so like and, Pluto, Pluto yeah. and Charon, or Charon, Charon or whatever or, yeah. is the moon. Um, they're tidally locked to each other. So the same so they face. Just point at each other, yeah. So you could. Put but the moon, tie the moon's together. tidally locked to us. But it then is, we but we're move. not tidally locked to the moon. No, that's true. So, no. unless you had like the base of it on the Earth constantly moving at the same speed that we the Earth's have a rotating. That's well, people talk about that anyway because um, one of the problems with it, especially around the Earth, is that it will just inevitably impact the orbits of other satellites. This cable. Right. It's just gonna somehow like the maths work out that it's just it's just it just will hit things. So you have to be right. able to dodge things. So either either you, so you have to keep moving the bottom around. Either you oscillate it at like a frequency that's like that will dodge stuff, so you know where everything God, is and you plan. Nuts. Yeah, or you tie the bottom to a mobile thing like a ship. That's something people yeah. talk about. Plus, also with a ship, you you dodge the problem of it being like in one country's territory. Well, this is the other thing. Like a space elevator is going to make a huge like whatever bi whoever builds that space elevator is going to be access to space is going to be more or less theirs and theirs alone in a, yeah, in a way like, it would be so much cheaper than any other method a space yeah. elevator just yeah. like pinging stuff off yeah be a, the amount of stuff you could lift as well like in one go and just be constantly ferrying back and forth yeah i mean suddenly suddenly like industry becomes like viable i mean we talked about this before but just like you might you can imagine this thing so like cheap, ferrying yeah. raw materials up and down the cable all the time as well as people and and robotic stuff and it's just going to be yeah it's yeah. crazy Every, it would just be just got such a long queue to get onto it yeah like you know wait times for it so maybe maybe actually you need to build a few of them yeah well you'd imagine yeah I don't know how many like climbers you can have going up and down and stuff no. and obviously no one probably knows but yeah and that, that actually matters for the physics of it because you, you, it's going to change like, yeah. the weight distribution on the cable and stuff you want to yeah. make sure you try and balance climbers going up and down at the same time and all yeah, that kind yeah, of yeah. stuff yeah isn't there like a plan from the Japanese to build one? Yeah, I've heard this. But I don't know how serious a plan it is. I mean, yeah, who knows? But they've said something like 2050, right? Yeah, that's the like, date I heard. 2050, a space element. Mind space you, element. why aren't we supposed to have the singularity by then? Yeah, I mean, Christ knows what's going to happen by 2050. If we've had the singularity, as then in the, forget the, the, the don't artificial worry about intelligence, don't worry about this. Yeah. Like, all of these plans will go right out the window. <laughs> we'll be doing whatever the AI wants us to do. Yeah. We'll talk about that in another episode. We will indeed. Possibly several other episodes. Yes, I think that's a multi-episode topic, yeah. probably. So um, so one, one cool thing about the... Well, cool thing to talk about, potentially bad thing 
about the Spurs, the Spurs elevator is obviously like what is its chances of, of failure what's its safety going to be like and what happens oh, if it, if it, shit, if it yeah. breaks right so you've made this thing out of carbon nanotubes but, but <laughs> that's not totally infallible and you could imagine some event like being hit by a meteorite or something that's going to damage it and, and it breaks yeah how do you or get even the climbers like war, off right like, like someone war, shoots it someone, someone, someone like a terrorist takes it attacks out. it or yeah. something I mean you'd have to have a pretty big bomb to break this, the, the like yeah I mean, how thick is this thing going to be apparently it's, it's going to have to be thicker at the at different levels as well yeah because like, that geosynchronous orbit's got to be thickest yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um to break that though like it would be difficult probably yeah. obviously it's one of those engineering things where you build in and minimise risk on like by just engineering out that risk and having multiple redundancies in it yeah but there's still you've still got to account for obviously a total failure of the structure yeah would you like what what would happen to the asteroid nothing really um I, well I think um, the asteroid is going to be moving at f- faster than orbital velocity right yeah because that's how it creates the tension yes so the asteroid will be gone. Just fling off. Fling off. <laughs> and if presumably the cable is just going to come down. If it breaks high up and the, the section that's that's moving slower than orbital velocity will 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 fall. <laughs> and if it's tens of thousands of kilometers wrong, it, long, it's going to wrap around the Earth. Is that actually what would happen? <laughs> it's just sort of like a ball of string, just sort of. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I mean, can, what? would that even look like coming down through the atmosphere would some of it like it wouldn't get fast enough to burn up maybe it would maybe it would it might not presumably the it, presumably not. The, the, it would the start fall, as soon as its tension is fu- gone it would start falling back to earth right yeah. oh god I don't but know surely actually. I mean people might have modelled this and stuff yeah. but you'd imagine that the, 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 the furthest end like the long end near the break would, would be speeding up and speeding up as it's like the rest of it's dropping down is gather, gaining, gaining momentum from the rest of it maybe not I don't know it's a crazy thing a to cr- think about. Though. I know. And like you, you draw a line around the Earth from wherever this base is, and it's, it's going to be hitting stuff that's important. It's going to be like smashing into seas and stuff, probably. <laughs> it's not going to be. Yeah, but it depends how thick it has to be. The cable. I mean, because like Maybe I imagine, could... I imagine like two different things in my head for a space elevator cable. Mm. Something that's like, like, sort of like something this sort of size like a sort of I don't know as big as like a table or something like a metre or two in diameter yeah or something that's like a hundred, like 10 100 metres in diameter like a massive okay. like structure that goes yeah, up yeah, into yeah. the clouds so I, I imagine somewhere I can't, between I the don't, two I don't, I don't really know what it's what the people have talked about no again I don't I think I mean, obviously it has been talked about it's probably yeah, quite yeah. easy to find that number I just don't know it yeah. but I imagine something that on the order more of like like 10 metres in diameter okay um so maybe it would just burn up a lot of it. I don't know. I don't know. But it's something. It's something that could be potentially really, really de- devastating. Yeah, you'd have to. You'd have to. You'd have whatever way the Earth's rotating. You, you might have to. You'd be able to probably model if it snapped at any point mm. where it would fall. Mm. And, and maybe you'd have like, 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 like trigger what, points, though. like explosives oh, on no, it, so that you could idea. disconnect sections of it. I was going to say that. And so yeah. they fly off into space or something. Half of it goes off with the asteroid or something. Yeah. You detect a failure and you like blow it up at the bottom and it gets dragged out of the atmosphere with the asteroid or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, how do you get rid? Of, how do the climbers get down? Yeah, they've all got to have escape pods of some kind, I guess. Like a parachute. Or yeah. Something. Or propulsive. But, but like landing, they've got like... to detach themselves. Yeah. So you have to like maybe explosive bolts or something to like get yourself get yourself away from the cave. It's gonna happen quite slowly. Like yeah. relatively slowly, I think, because it's so big and because the distance has evolved in massive. So you'd probably have time to be like, okay, shit, we need to evacuate. Everyone get in the escape pods or whatever. <laughs> the yeah. escape pods, that's cool. Oh, yeah. And obviously there'd be different... You'd have to have different methods of escape, potentially. Or you just use the same one that's like a like a sort of dragon capsule type thing that can re-enter the atmosphere mm. from anywhere at any point up mm. in the thing and be tricky for the people who are really high up the cable who are above the geosynchronous orbit point where they get where they would be flung off into space so they're already travelling faster than orbit velocity <laughs> they just so they'd, they'd have to be they'd have to have on their I way guess, to Mars. fuel or something on board so they could change their you know so they could come back to earth I don't, I don't know I, no that's true yeah. I mean sure, surely if, if uh, once you get above that point then you've got to have some kind of cor- uh, orbital correction system mm, mm. to burn your way back down and then you've got to like calculate a route down 
you know it's got to be, obviously it will be like automatically done for yeah. you and, and ready and prepared and yeah none of this yeah none of this like planning for weeks before or your trajectories and stuff the computer's just got to sort you out on the fly it's got to go. land you somewhere yeah. quickly that's a way it's also got to know like where the cable's falling where it's broken all yeah. these types of things if you're attached above the cable and the cable's like being dragged out into space by the asteroid you've got to like get off that as it's like flinging itself out and oh, there's so many different yeah. things to consider but by that point by that point you'd expect that, that like flying around in space and all that all the, all that's involved in that would be so routine and so like yeah. so we'd have it so down mm. that it would be like okay now we're, we're adrift we've just got to sort this out and the computer will just be sorting you out with everything like calculating all the trajectories and the burns and stuff you have to do to get yeah. home um maybe there might be but space stations it- in orbit and stuff that you can go and dock with like little like lifeboat sort of places to go and refuel or whatever land on the moon maybe <laughs> i don't know yeah oh that's so cool to I think know. about oh yeah that's the thing having just a, a space, just, if we had a space elevator it would imply that we are in space like we have industry yeah. in space there's people yeah a space elevator people in space mars Loads and people. earth kind of you just you know it's that's just crazy it's just yeah. it's just stuff so it's easy sight, to get yeah. up and down imagine what just imagine what a space elevator looks like going to the base of one like driving up to the base of one and it's just like it's just like a, a th- is like it a, gonna be a, yeah it's the thing we don't have thickness in i swear in like a from a distance you, it would just look like a thread just like from over the horizon yeah. or something just stretching off into the sky i swear in a Ooh. in a in a cool of duty game which i haven't played but i saw a photo of there's like a level where there's like a space elevator and you can go to the the bottom of it and i'm pretty sure the photo it looks obviously i don't know if call of duty is accurate on this or whatever probably not but it just looks like a like a colossal kind of tower thing almost that just like going up into the clouds (laughs) i Um, kind of imagine the climbers as well like you imagine you get close to this thing you see one coming out of the base terminal thing at the bottom yeah and i imagine i imagine a climber to be sort of the size of like a, a small building just like stuck on the side of the cable just moving up and it's counterbalanced by another one coming down at the same rate at the same time yeah um just like a giant th- you know you, you could hold like hundreds of people in it or like tons and tons of payload or whatever yeah. in one of these things i mean yeah, i really hope this nice. happens yeah it, it seems like it's crazy it's a crazy thought but it's, it's not too crazy i mean we need a lot of materials science yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. And we need to be able to manufacture on a scale <laughs> we've never ever even considered considered doing before yeah um and maybe yeah. like something like it's asteroid probably... mining is going to be like one of the catalysts sort of we said it obviously the the uh, space elevator you know would make a huge difference to uh, the economy of wherever it's built and the global economy but it would probably have to be a joint project between yeah. multiple countries of course. but it would still have to be housed in one location obviously well well maybe not with a ship or maybe or not with a ship but i feel like a ship there's there's not enough there's not enough redundancy what happens if the ship sinks <laughs> <laughs> well it'd be like more like a floating island wouldn't it it'd be like a yeah, monster uh, yeah um, seems a bit I yeah I don't know it, yeah it should be, should be, be so large that like weather and, doesn't and, make any difference to it and stuff like that mm. um, but getting people and equipment and things yeah. to the ship I mean it just seems like an extra level of sure where More you could build like real infrastructure to ship things to the base of the space elevator yeah. if it's in like yeah I don't know Tokyo <laughs> yeah although you wouldn't near the equator ah oh, good point yeah I think I think it just gets a bit complicated if you have it away from the equator yeah that makes um, sense. 